Season 2 of EGFH in Overwatch. My name is Kevin Navic Dignan, and today I'm joined by the VK. Today, we're live with games from our Connecticut region. We're starting with games between the Sheehan Titans and the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. I want to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and Mob Crush for making this season possible. Now, to get into this game, the map selection would be just like you see it in Overwatch League. Hybrid, then Assault, then Control, then Escort, then, if needed, a Tiebreaker on Control. And this week's uh, map pool is King's Row, Anubis, Lee Jang Tower, Dorado, and as the tiebreaker map, Oasis. Yeah, and um, I'm... This is going to be a very interesting week to see. It's, uh, we don't see a lot, of, a lot of Lee Jang, a lot of Anubis, actually. And uh, Anubis is one of the most flexible maps in terms of macro strategies. Yeah, no, they definitely should be some good games. And we've got two fantastic teams, as we were saying. On the blue side, of course, we've got the Titans. And on the red side, the Falcons. And both teams have some absolutely now phenomenal entry. players. Kagazi, of course, that Farah player. I mean, past weeks, last season, he showed off time and time again that he is not to be ignored when he's flying around. Well, Glacier sure has a say about it. Does Widowmaker play? Or uh, whoever's gonna play Widowmaker on the Falcon's side. And of course, there's gonna be Stivek, our top 500 tank. He's gonna be the man to watch here. And uh, he's actually, he's always been. Now, the Falcons, I believe, are going without losing a single match right now. They've won everything they played and uh, i'm sure they're ready to win this one as well yeah but i definitely wouldn't underestimate the titans i would need to double check on the brackets but i don't think these two teams have played against each other this season they may have once but um Attackers. the titans are definitely one of those teams as well that if they do lose to a team they they rewatch their boards they pay attention you know, they try and figure out what they do wrong and they adapt. But I'd say that goes for both teams. They're both very, very good at just making sure, you know, they practice it out and think about the strategies. So it could go a different way. Look at the interesting strategy from the Titans. I believe we've seen something similar similar from London Spitfire, in Overwatch League. That uh, triple tank pick, but back then it was only one support, Mercy. But back then she could heal much better. Now we've got a generic GOATS composition from the Falcons. They're going in. Yeah, and that Falcons, uh, the Falcons being that GOAT comp, they're going to be trying to find one person all grouping up onto somebody. Zoom manages to find Capri Sun, but quickly dies down by Mr. Mage there. Stevic managing to find Mr. Mage, so that's one Reinhardt up for the um, the Falcons there, as the Titans Reinhardt does in fact fall. Tree falls very quickly, and once again, that GOATS comp being the GOATS comp manages to find pick after pick. They're going to be able to control this first point very easily. Roadhog didn't work too well for the Titans, but uh, they seem reluctant on changing it. They uh, don't want to change him. They want to stay the same composition. I am uh, not sure why, but uh, perhaps they have a plan. Perhaps they want to get this to the ultimate stage and play this off the ultimate. Yeah, the hammer down coming out from Mr. Major there. The Earth Shadow's going to be able to find Fruity Memes, but he quickly turns around, managing to get the charge onto Anti Mail, completely separating him from his team. He's not going to be able to get any healing from that coalescence from being around the corner. Schnark is very high on the percentile here, as long with Kagazi, as both of them are going to be trying to melt, out, uh, melt down the other team's Reinhardt shield. The charge does come out, it manages to find Schnark, and he is going to fall, so that's going to leave Kagazi being the only charged warrior, along with that Earth Shadow. It's going to be able to find three there. Glacier, uh, Fruity Memes, and Stevok all falling there, so the Titans actually t managing to win that fight. Fairly, like, you know, fairly well. That still cost them two Earth Shatters. And uh, we've got an Earth Shatter on Stevek and a mech on Anti Mail. So this could potentially be a very dangerous combo here. If Anti Mail manages to sneak up someone in the high ground and just drop this mech on top of uh, the Titan's heads. I'd say more if importantly, on the old. turns around, he's gonna get. Uh, 
Yeah, we see so many O's coming out from this fight. Glacier pops his sound barrier there, trying to keep his team alive as we hear the Riptire coming out from Tree. It's going to be flanking around behind the Falcons here, and if they're not ready for it, which in fact Zoom was watching behind, making sure that his team didn't get flanked by that tire. The fight continuing to uh, break out here as Mr. Major tries to get a little bit of damage in, but he's going to get separated very quickly, healed there by Sir Captain's Nano Boost there, of course, that heals him all the way up to full health. The Coalescence coming out. We hear the Earth Shadow managing to hit three once again. Oh, sorry. Yes, three there. And turning around there to charge into anti Mel Snark getting caught out a little bit there by Elephant Man's hook. Gonna get quickly melted down by Kagazi, but Zoom's gonna be able to find a lot of picks coming out there as well. A lot of damage coming out from those junk crap bombs. We see the coal lessons coming out, um, coming out from Capri Sun there as it manages to get a little bit of damage, in, but not enough to do any sheer dent into the Falcons. So they're gonna continue pushing this point with little, little attempt to contest by the Titans because they're just constantly getting put, uh, pushed back by the amount of damage that's coming out. And the Graviton Tire combo from the Falcons is looking very dangerous, especially seeing as uh, the Titans have no diva to eat the Graviton. Kagazi, both of the both of the Graviton surges coming out there. First Kagazi's then quickly followed up uh, by Snarks, and Snark is going to be able to win that fight due to just sticking them all onto that Graviton a little bit later, and there was no follow up unfortunately for Kagazi's uh, Graviton surge. The payload has reached... And both Junkrats kept their ultimates ready, but uh, never used the rip tires. Yeah, I so still don't see of... the idea behind the Roadhog pick, but uh, maybe it's uh, something to replace the Reaper. Something with a self heal and 600 HP of that Reaper. And like you were saying a little while ago, if we saw a combo coming out between that Diva Bomb and the Earth Shadow from Stevok, and anti email we were going to see a couple picks coming out, and with nobody realizing that Stevok was behind them, they had managed to very quickly get a bit of a surprise finding a pip. Glacier actually knocking Mr. Mage off of the map there. A little bit of a boop. We see the charge coming out from Stevok finding Capri Sun, so that means they're down both of their healers right now, and it's going to be him to Tree to try and survive, but sadly he does in fact fall. And just Falcons one person just on the pushing them to the spawn, not letting them close to the payload while it rolls. Yeah, we see the Nano coming out onto Mr. Mage, followed up by a Coalescence from Free Meme. So both the teams now are going to be popping all of their ults. Both the Riptides coming out. Zoom managed to find two picks of Capri Sun and Sir Captain, but we see the other Riptide coming out. Unfortunately, not finding anyone in Earth Shadow coming down, but sadly quickly falls down. And we see Hammond coming out, but Stevic Earth Shadows and manages to find Elephant Man's Hammond there. So it's going to be down to Tree to try and defend the point, but he's not going to be able to in time. Capri Sun trying to jump onto the point along with Sir Captain, but there's just going to be too much damage coming out from them. And the point, this first map or point is going to go towards the Falcons. It's ironic how the two only kills on uh, on that last stage when they, they were just running down the clock were three suicide bombs after he just uh, got killed. Those little grenades killed two people and still that, uh, that double kill wasn't enough. Yeah, that was, that was an unfortunate turn of events, but from the side of the Falcons, they're definitely happy with that performance, keeping that fight going on for so long and just managing to keep most of their team alive. You can't really be too upset for that, for uh, how well they played. Well, that's goats for you. They uh, they just hate dying. Although it wasn't uh, really goats, because uh, we've seen junk rats from both sides. Still, still. Now, an interesting pick from the Falcons. Junkrat and Widowmaker combo. Well, we see the same composition from the Titans. Five Goats heroes and uh, a Junkrat instead of a Moira. To be honest, I like this pick a lot more than uh, the Roadhog one. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't see the idea behind the Roadhog pick. Other than just uh, 600 HP Reaper. Yep. Yeah. And, again, that little bit of extra damage coming out from Tree's Junkrat, along with the rest of the Goat's comp, might be just what they need to try and get past. But with anti email on Widowmaker, we've seen him get so many picks, and some he's just a fantastic sniper in a lot of cases. So, I, I'm excited to see if he manages to find a got a Far Mercy now. So Probably got smart now. Moira, they've got a Far Mercy. anti -mail. Just stepping up. This is yeah, already no. looking pretty grim. Yeah, the Falcon's gonna be pushing up a bit aggressively here. They're going to just kind of want to zone them out, not let them rush all into that point with that Goat's comp. Because the the goal, of course, if anybody doesn't know for Goats, is to just rush in, kill one target, kill another one, and just snowball that effect out. 
But if you can deal enough damage before they can get in onto like their back line, it's a lot harder for Goats to just happily push in, I would say. So I need to more, find a more clamped up the point is, the better it is for Goats. Goats struggle in open spaces. <sighs> Yeah, and with that Earth Shadow coming out from Sevic, they're actually managing to find four followed up by Zuba and Anti Mail. They're going to be able to find pretty much a team kill here. Kagazi being the last one alive, and that's going to be a team kill. And still, zero ultimates ready from t for the Titans. Nothing. Nothing. A Graviton getting stacked up faster than an Earth Shatter, that's, that's something new. This means Mr. Mage is uh, not getting enough space to play the rain hard. And there we hear the Graviton followed up by the Riptide. They're going to have absolutely nothing to stop it as Zoom manages to find five picks there. Elephant Man just running around as that little diva, deciding yeah, just, to, just to end himself there, try and regroup with his team. And still, only one ultimate, only one Valkyrie ready. Three is uh, very far away with the Riptide, so. Gagazi is uh, not getting that Sweep Tire plus Graviton combo. They need to figure something out. Yeah, Animal finding Caprice on there, which is going to be absolutely huge. We hear the Valkyrie being popped by Fruity Memes. Animal finding a second pick on Tree there, so that's going to be their main source of damage coming down. And Stevic isn't afraid right now. He sees the Earth Shadow, he sees Sir Captain, he's going to say, No, you know what, Sir Captain, we need you gone so you can stop all of that healing, and then we're just going to run back to our point. Hello. Are they actually waiting a six ultimate push? The Titans, I mean. Um, they're still I stacking up. I mean, they're not too far off of it, of course. Now it's only down to Elephant Man to get his self-destruct. And with that being 8% away, we should see it very quickly. Tree very quickly regretting his decisions there as Animal spots him. We see the Graviton coming out and we hear the Riptire. Animal knows where Tree is, but he isn't going to find the uh, Riptire in time. Fruit is sadly falling down there. As we see an Earth Shadow coming out, Stevok. Um, actually, Stevok was saved by a sleep from Glacier. So, fortunately there, you know, a bit of, a bit of awareness for the rest of your team, a bit of positioning, and Glacier managed to completely shut down that Earth Shadow. As we see the Graviton coming out there from Schnark, managing not to really find anybody, but just cancelling out that positioning, and we're going to see a little Zarya fight coming up. We hear the co uh, Coalescence coming out from Capri, so 60 seconds left on the clock, and the Rini, they're still on this first point. The rest of the both teams now managing to get back into the point, so this fight is practically completely reset. And you have only one ultimate for the Titans to work with, and they put right now Zoom getting caught in it, and no ultimates at all left for both teams. Yeah, so now it's going to be come down to a fight of a bit more mechanical skill as Capri Sun does fall due to being anti hill from Glacier, not being able to find anyone. We see Stevic getting nanoed here, so Stevic's going to be doing a lot of damage with those hammer swings, and unfortunately, there's just not enough by the looks of it to manage to keep Stevic away from the rest of his team. We see Sir Captain trying to get away now, Tree still up in that high ground, hoping maybe that he hasn't been spotted. And it doesn't look like he has been. Oh, until he, t yeah, until he starts firing there. So now revealing his positioning, Stevic is going to know exactly where he is. We're going to see Zoom firing uh, his mines into there and just generally trying to slow him down. We see the hammer down, down and it does find Sir Captain. So that's going to mean there's going to be no Lucio. Oh, a bubble saving. Oh, Kagazi managing to save Sir, uh, Sir Captain there with a the bubble. We hear the Valkyrie being popped out and with a the Graviton there. Both Gravitons coming out there. Mr. Major and Kagazi being caught in one. Whilst it was mostly Stevic and, oh, Stevic and Antimail being caught from the other. Fruity Moves jumping into the point there, getting back their Doomfist here. We know how how good anti Mail is on this Doom Fist, and he's going to be able to find one pig coming out with that Meteor Strike. He knows Elephant Man's getting out of that mech, but he's not going to be looking for it. He's going to be looking for the backline as he does manage to find Tree, and that looks like the first map is going to go towards the Falcons. Victory. Well, that was, uh, that was pretty hectic, to say, if not chaotic, because uh, the skill is present in both teams, but the picks... I am not sure what Titans are trying to do here, but uh, my advice to them, stick to something more traditional. Because uh, that uh, just a usual dive into Widowmaker might have worked. Something, uh, a usual static comp with their own Widowmaker, make someone duel with the uh, anti-mail, that might have worked. A usual ghost might have worked. And uh, I don't really get the ideas behind those uh, experimental comps, but... Maybe it's time to stop. The experiment failed. Time to get back to basics. And what map are we going into for game 2, VK?
What, what, yeah, what should we see out Yeah, the going to be a two control points map, assault map, temple of Anubis. Okay, and, and what, what should we be seeing the composition being on both teams, on defense, on attack? What, what are common heroes that we'll be seeing played? Uh, I'd predict a Widowmaker from Antimail, a general dive pick from Falcons as a team. From the Titans, well, you could expect anything from what we've seen. They could have, they uh, they can go as far as picking a Symmetra plus Bastion combination and uh, juggling between two high grounds, creating space for Bastion, playing their whole team for the Bastion, protecting win uh, him with Orisa with uh, another Widowmaker. Now entering the temple of Anubis. I don't know, something like Anna. They uh, they could actually do anything here, but what I'm hoping to see is something classic, something uh, like a Rain Zarya, Hanzo, McCree, and uh, Mercy Lucio, Merciana, something like that. Something simple and powerful. Just, just some Torbjorn. We still have, I I know we did see him play, didn't we? Very briefly. Oh, yeah. on last week's match. Yeah. Just a little bit of Torbjorn. Well, Torb actually could do very well on this map. Because uh, a lot of high grounds allow for a lot of safe turret spots. Where it wouldn't be the first concern for the attacking teams to pick that turret off. And they're just going to sit there and uh, build up Torbjorn's the ultimate charge. And his ultimate is extremely seconds. powerful on 2 CP maps. If uh, yeah. placed well, if timed well, it can deny the whole point for the attacking team. And that's something yeah. you have to consider. Yeah, no, definitely. An ultimate that completely denies the area, slows, does damage over time. I mean, it's it's definitely scary and not something to be taken lightly. Five, oh, looks like four, we're going to see a three, Widowmaker duel. Two, one. An actual Symmetra here. Incoming. Poultry is actually, by the looks of it, going to be staying onto that Symmetra, so I believe this is the first Symmetra that we've seen this season. Stabbock being on that high ground, letting anti Mel just freely snipe, not being, not having to be afraid of that Widow duel at all because he's got a shield surrounding him. And most of the Falcons here are probably going to play on this high ground, wait for them, uh, for the Titans to rush over to the count, like the other side of the high ground, and then proceed to jump on them with the Diva Junkrat. Kagazi just instantly switching to Hanzo, realizing he's uh, no match for anti male, especially behind the shield. Yeah, look and at that that that... yeah, and that was an interesting bit of tech coming out there, but unfortunately, Mr. Mage wasn't able to find a pick as he came through charging through that teleporter. We see Snark on top of Kagazi here. Kagazi does fall, and it's going to be down to Sir Cap oh, sorry, Capri Sun being on the point there, along with Elephant Man. And unfortunately for the Titans here, it looks like they're going to want to back out, I'm just regroup with their team, Enemy not feed out sight. any more ultimates as we do see anti Mel getting that in for a sight and popping it almost sight. immediately. I really like the idea of the Symmetra. Just get on the high ground and then teleport right into the heart of the enemy team. But uh, Falcons are just too good to fall to you that. Must like me. They are smart enough to destroy the teleporter before anyone comes through it. A team a little bit worse, and this might have worked just fine. But against the Falcons? Not really. Yeah, and again, this fight breaking out here, the Titans are going to have to try and get them off that high ground as quickly as they can. As we hear Zoom's uh, Riptide coming out, it does find Sir Captain Kagazi and Capri Sun falling down to, uh, falling to uh, Glacier and Stabok. And with Elephant Man just sitting on that point now, he's going to try something. Tree, unfortunately, landing in that Junkrat trap as they try to get up onto the high ground and feed a bit of information towards their team. Elephant oh, Man just staggering there. That neck cooldown might not have been a good idea as he just fed 500 HP worth of ultimate charge to the enemy team. That's a huge mistake from him. Yeah, supercharger Valkyrie. And team has to wait for him again. Yeah, supercharger Valkyrie and uh, the self-destruct there on the side of the Falcons is going to be...
super important coming up on this next fight. And like you said, feeding 500 health of ultimate charge to the enemy team is not what you ever want to be doing. Well, Tree is still there building up the I'm EMP, but uh, having only Mr. Mage's uh, Earth Shatter as the only ultimate in your team, that's not really reassuring. And they now don't have the Symmetra TP to try and just feed everyone onto there and overpower them on the high ground. Comes the Stavix Supercharger, Schnark. Yeah, breaking into the fight, Andy Mel finding that pick onto Sir Captain, and then we see the Hulk coming out from Stevic, unfortunately not finding anybody as Mr. Mage tries to tries to support his team as much as he can with that shield, Sir Captain's shield breaking down very quickly. And 30 seconds left onto the clock, I'm not sure what they're going to manage to do. Well, they might manage to build up an EMP. Some, uh, some Diva Bombs, some uh, Earth Shatter they already have. And a little bit of beats to spice it up, so it might work for them next time. If they survive this fight. Yeah, Tree's gonna be on the point now, but unfortunately with Elephant Man and Mr. Mage, both of their tanks being caught out before the fight even started and Zoom having his rip tire. He does actually get picked off, so Zoom's gonna be looking to try and stop them on the follow-up. We see the Val or we see the Valkyrie being popped up, followed by the EMP, but nobody there to contest the point, unfortunately. That's that's a perfect Score. situation read here Zero. from the Falcons. Zero. They realize that uh, there's not much time. They realize that half the enemy team is still there, still on the high ground, and they decide to push them. They know they can't push them with their full force because they've got an Orisa. They've got the uh, non-mobile Widowmaker because uh, a Widowmaker that shows their face in close quarters combat is just going to get a face slapped. They still decide to push and they succeed. They win the fight and subsequently win the whole game. So uh, the Titans are forced to regroup or forced to contest with uh, without their full team, without their ultimate. And that was very, very unfortunate. But like you said, it was a absolutely phenomenal read coming out from the Falcons there. They read the situation, they used the information, I believe they used that from Infrasight. And uh, using that all together, they realized if we push in now, we might be able to just completely deny them any tanks for this last push. And another interesting team composition from the Titans. They are suddenly going to be my favorite team considering the team comps. Because uh, they've got a May and they've got a Junkrat. I am not sure if they uh, do not expect a Far Mercy or just know that it's not going to be a Far Mercy on the Falcon's side. But that's a very bold beak right there. Yeah, this definitely, but we see the Titans actually practically copying the strats of the, uh, the Falcons that had just been used here, but deciding to veto out the Widowmaker for uh, May there, and that might actually work out for them, but we'll have to see how well it works. With Stavik being on the Winston, he instantly gets onto the point. And the difference here is their positioning, right? They decided to stay underneath the high ground for at least a little while until they found a couple picks and then moved outwards onto the point because now they have a lead on heroes, they have a lead on players. Sir Captain's not going to be able to survive being chased down by a Widow there or a Winston there. And with Trin Kagazi trying to find something, all three of them are just grouped up, being hit by that Winston Tesla coil, along with anti male Spire there, it's going to be very hard for them to recover. We see the Primal Rage coming out from Ka or from uh, Stavik there onto Capri San, trying to push him off the point as Elephant Man just managed to get back in time. We're going to see Sir Captain is also with a rollout there, nice little rollout, managing to find onto the point, but unfortunately instantly gets picked off by anti male We see Winston coming out, we hear the Diva Bomb coming out, but we're going to see Winston Bubble coming out. Oh, that was a lot of things coming out right there, Mr. Mage trying to get onto the point and unfortunately just not going to be able to and map 2 is going to go to the Falcons. Well that was their own diva there. Stark just uh, tossing it up air, trying to deny whoever would be stupid enough to come to the point to contest. That's uh, that's impeccable. That's some textbook overwatch from the Falcons there. And as much as I admire the Titans' picks and Epic. the Titans' boldness Shall in their picks, done? I say again, they need to stick to something uh, more reliable and more time-proven. 
Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that one. Because if they had tried something like that, then maybe. Or, you know, just playing underneath the point a little bit more, trying to force the... Uh, the Falcons down on that first uh, attacking round, it might have worked out, but unfortunately that didn't happen. And now we're going to be going into map three. And the map three is going to be control on Lee Jang Tower. Now that's another map that allows for a lot of tactical, um, tactical decisions and strategical decisions and different picks and different team compositions. And I love seeing Lee Jang Tower getting played on all levels. I like playing it myself. I like seeing it uh, in the contenders in Overwatch League and uh, of course here on EGF. Because teams always have uh, something figured out. Some ace in the hole that might help them win the map. And looking at Titans here, I'm sure they've got everything now to win this map. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Uh, I am excited to see what both teams come up with here. If we're going to see like the standard GOATS comp coming out from Slate, one of the teams, from both of the teams. If we're going to see some more interesting compositions from anybody. Maybe we see a Torbjorn. And uh, of course, we are playing on the Overwatch League rule set. So if the Falcons manage to win this one, it will be... The, well, it will be the match point towards them. However, we will always be playing to our fourth map. Just to get those wins and losses and give them a, a you know a bit of a chance to just up their score in the brackets. Still, that's the last chance for the Titans to at least get to the tiebreaker. Maybe turn the tide around. Maybe take the game from the Falcons. And um, I guess Falcons are going to use something fairly standard. Something like uh, goats or a farmer's static comp, oh, something like there. that. Now the titans, those are unpredictable. They can go anything they like. Now we already see elephant man picking a roadhog and tree picking a symmetra. I, I keep wondering what their plan is. What do they want to do with that symmetra? But what? as as you said that, and you, we were talking about you, you were just talking about the Falcons not really sticking or going anything off the beaten path. But right now I'm seeing, well, I'm seeing Hammond, I'm seeing Doomfist, I'm seeing Sombra. That's you know, I I I definitely am excited to see what the comps come out here. As my model's finally loaded, there just as the back action starts to come in, Anti Mail manages to find that pick on Capri Sun. Mr. Mage getting that first pick onto Glacier, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to matter here. As Stevic manages to get a huge knock up, managing to find Mr. Mage, and it's going to be down to Elephant Man, who is now hacked by Zoom, so he's not going to be able to heal up at all. And it's Sir Captain just trying to contest this point until the rest of his team can get back, but he's not going to be able to. And we're going to see the initial point flip over towards the Falcons. Guys, he was way oh. too early to die. He was needed there. His barrier were needed there. And now 3D Memes is just using the first nano 10% in the game. And yeah, we're gonna see this fight breaking out. Stevic, unfortunately, they're trying to bulldoze his way through with that wrecking ball, but getting stuck on, I believe, Mr. Mage there and just not being able to build up the momentum he needed to as he managed to find another big knock up there, trying to find some people, tree finding anti mail on that Symmetra, which is gonna be very useful. That Doomfist is not gonna be able to get behind that backline, but we're gonna see the EMP coming out from Zoom, which is gonna be so important here, followed up by the Steeper Bomb. They're not gonna have any shield, and Stark just find a triple kill. So Captain just getting around the corner in time, but what, what a, you, you can see the coordination coming out from the Falcons here is just that EMP into the Deeper Bomb. That was something that was prepped. They maybe were looking for Stevic to get a five-man to follow, or five-man knock-up into the EMP, but three kills are still phenomenal. And that's just so much ultimate pressure from the Falcons here. And they still have the minefield from Stevic. They still yeah, have... I was just going to say, just as you mentioned the minefield there, we're going to see Stivak uh, press it there, managing to find Kagazi. Mr. Mage sitting in the corner here as he pleads not to be murdered, but he isn't going to be able to as he is going to fall down to the rest of the team here. And we're going to see Sir Captain trying to get around that corner, trying to get back and heal up as much as he can. 
And Stabrick is just pushed up all the way onto the point here. He does get hit by Elephant Man, and we hear the Meteor Strike coming out. Glacier finding that map off. The Meteor Strike coming down. Kagazi falling to Stabrick from Wrecking Ball there. Mr. Mage now being hacked. He's not going to have any shield, and they are so aggressive. They are playing so aggressively, and they have the time to. They have the, even with five ultimates on the opposing side. Six ultimates on the Titans, and they can't use them. They just completely shut down. Yes, exactly. They've got no chance to use those six ultimates. Three of them could wipe the Falcons, and the Falcons still win the whole map flawlessly without a single percent of the point going towards the Titans. How, and most importantly, why are Titans still holding on to their weird picks? Don't get me wrong, I love those, but Thanks for the assist. it's really time to stop. Five, four, I mean, I'd say both teams both teams aren't really playing anything that you'd call, you know, meta. I'd, I'd, I'd argue that both of them are playing slightly off meta comps. And we're going to see both teams now running Wrecking Ball, using the environment around them. So many knockups. We're going to see Gla oh, uh, Glacier there managing to find Capri, uh, Capri-san and Kagazi. Snark managing to get Elephant Man. And Mr. Bates is going to try and recover some of his team, but he just rolls off at the edge. Stever getting that knockoff. And it looks like there's a possibility. Okay, Sir Captain there with a nice little rollout, getting that movement speed build up from Lucio's passive is going to let him get back into the point and survive for a little bit longer. Speed boost! Zoom plus Fruity Memes combo, just flying up there, uncontested, absolutely uncontested. Hanzo is not a concern for them, Sombra is definitely not a concern for them. For them. Who's who's going to deal with the farmers? Captain yeah, that's, I think that's the question at the moment, unless Elephant Man manages to find a couple headshots, it's going to be very hard as we see Stevic just diving in, forcing them into a corner and then proceeding to ult. They have absolutely nowhere to go. They could tr slowly try and get rid of the mines, but by that point, they're already going to be, like, they're already going to have died. <laughs> the rest of the Falcons are completely catching them off there. Looks to me the Falcons are just face-rolling their keyboards and still winning the fights. They're, they're so dominating. Yeah, Zoom trying, Zoom anti-mail just sat there watch it, uh, and watched Zoom, th oh sorry, watched Tree throw out his translocator there and they just proceeded to chase after him as Doomfist. And Zoom almost has the barrage, Fruity Meme has the Valkyrie, it's gonna be a battle mercy? No, it's not gonna be a battle mercy. Once again, catching them out into this, this small compressed area, I'd argue right now at composition why this is exactly where the Falcons wanna be, right? They've got Doomfist, they've got Farah. Like, we even see Fruity Memes there with that Mercy Pistol, just trying to be a bit of a Battle Mercy. Stevic's going to chase after uh, after Tree, trying to find him, but he's not going to be able to. Just as they need to regroup here, 70% on the point. It's not been flipped over once. At the moment, the Falcons are just right. dominating. They're applying so much pressure. Ready so far for the Titans. Only the beats on Sir Captain. Finally, the Dragon and... Uh, the minefield come up. The well, the other ultimates are pretty close, but uh, the Titans might not get a chance to use them. Yeah, we see the mines coming out from both teams here, and I'd argue at the moment, at the moment, in a lot of cases, the Winston that uses their mines second are usually the ones that win because they just have the time to um, wrecking ball through and destroy all of the opposing Hammond's mines. I think I might just said Winston, but we'll just skip over that one as we might actually be seeing for the first time here some semblance of a winning fight for the titans but that's quickly shut down almost as i say it as the falcons manage to just clear out this second map and we uh, will be going into our fourth map but wow the falcons were so oppressive i mean really at that point they could just go battle mercy i don't know nano boost that mercy go valkyrie and uh, start popping off heads because it's it's purely psychological warfare right there. The Titans are not not really far away skill wise. They've uh, they've got some really interesting ideas with their picks, but they just can't set them right, can't execute them right, and the Falcons are not leaving them a chance to. 
Yeah, and uh, now going into our fourth map, which I do believe is Dorado. Well, again, what Absolutely what do you think we should correct. be seeing? Well, something uh, usual and proven from the Falcons, like goats or maybe a pirate ship, though. Maybe the Falcons will get not cocky, but uh, just, you know, want to have a little bit of fun in the game they've already won and go pirate ship. And the Titans, well, they can definitely go pirate ship. Maybe something Torbjorn, maybe something Symmetra, seeing how Titans are keen of Symmetra now. And uh, we're just we're just waiting for the teams to get ready now to go into this. Well, final round as the Falcons have of course won their third point, so the set does go towards them. So we won't be seeing a tiebreaker this week. For better or worse, now arriving the Titans Jones seriously Kata. need to polish those team combinations. Um. A slight miscommunication there, but we'll be getting into Dorado any second now. And let's, what, what... Uh, let's discuss a little bit uh, those those micro moments. I've I've spoken a lot about Traveling macro, about uh, reading team combinations, reading the ultimates, reading the whole game, but the micro, those mm -hmm. little plays that make the difference. Yeah, I mean, some of the micro moments you could be thinking about is Stebek and Mr. Mage on that last, um, on that last, uh, Elio, Hammond no, not duo. Elio. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, the Hammond duo on Li Zhang. For some reason, my brain was thinking Elios. On Li Zhang, we saw Mr. Mage use Hammond's ultimate to try and completely deny the point, but in a Hammond versus Hammond matchup, Hammond can destroy the other Hammond's minds by just charging through them with enough, enough velocity. So like I was saying, if two Hammonds have ult, the first Hammond ults and the second Hammond charges through it, destroys most of the mines and then proceeds to ult on top of it, you're going to get more profit out of your ult for being the second Hammond. So that like bringing some patience into it and thinking about that positioning is really important. And one of those decisions that we saw Stevic make. That is, uh, that's quite interesting how, uh, for those Hammond plays are making a huge difference. And uh, that really makes me believe Hammond is more of a main tank than uh, an off tank. So a lot of people ask me how Hammond get, can be a main tank if he doesn't have a shield. He doesn't have anything to protect his team with. And that's uh, That just explains it all. A Hammond player needs to have a lot more brain to his brawn to be actually useful to a team. Yeah, I definitely, I, I think he's kind of a middle of the ground tank. I don't think he should be used as a main tank, but I mean, if you have no main tank players and you play Hammond, you kind of can. It's just, you've got to be thinking about that positioning, thinking about how to use his E, because obviously his personal shield gets larger and then body blocking as much damage as you can through just being an annoyance. And of course, we've seen this week after week, anti Mail's little tech there going over the roof, but he is going to miss it this week, unfortunately. Zoom coming up behind them as we see Stebuck also jumping in, managing all of all three of them, managing to avoid Mr. Major's charge there. Glacier finding Kagazi's turret, so that's going to be a constant source of damage actually falling. And we have a Torbjorn, I guess we didn't actually realize that or speak about that for the moment being as this fight continues going on. So, uh, so anti Mail and Free Mims are going to find two pigs. Zoom's going to pull to Mr. Mage, and another man is going to find Glacier. So it's going to be pretty much a 4v4 fight, but as I say that, Free Mims are stuck both pull to Mr. Mage. So it looks like the Titans might be able to defend this first push. Finally, something going the way of Titans. They've got two shield tanks, they've got an Orisa and the Reinhardt, they've got a, a Torbjorn. That's another of their weird picks, but uh, this time this time it actually works. Zoom switches to Farah without a Mercy. He's gonna get a lot of trouble from Kagazi's third, or at least should get a lot of trouble from it. 
Yes, they reckon Zoom here. We hear the Molten Core coming up from Kigazi, of course that. Still being the ultimate, even though it's the abilities were switched around to the new Molten Core is of course that area denying Molten Iron, as you can see, or Magma. And it does actually find Glacier here, and Emil getting the Meteor Strike onto the Supercharger, trying to deny as much damage as he can. Mr. Mate is going to fall down to Zoom and Shark there, and they're going to find the team kill as they just push up this point. Kigazi switches to a counter Farah without any mercy to help him as well, but uh, if Zoom at least has a Zenyatta, Kigazi has nothing. No, now he has a mercy with him. And yeah, we're gonna see that Pharmacy versus Mofara comp here because we do see Zoom not having a Pharmacy, but Stevic is very aggressive on these Pharmacy comps. He knows what he can do on his Winston and he knows when to chase and not to. We see the self destruct coming out and it's going to find that Pharmacy. So, as we were just talking about that, that's being completely denied almost immediately from the Diva Bomb. Ashtar just uh, calculating the height precisely to take the Pharmacy away because uh, I Bet Kigazi was like, it's not landing on us, it's falling down before it explodes, we're safe, and then it just goes boom. Kills him, kills three, opens up the second point. Zoom yeah, and we and hear he has the barrage. Sir Captain's Riptide is going to come out here, but quickly followed around by Stevic. We see the justice coming out from Zoom, managing almost to find three, as he just manages to survive for a mere second. And Nana boosted Fire. Coming from the Falcons. Sorry about that, I fell into a bit of a coughing pit as we're going to get back into this fight now. We see the Transcendence coming out from Glacier, managing to get hooked, but that hook was quickly denied by Anti Male, managing to find his Meteor Strike after that rocket punch. We see Tree falling to Snark, and now he's thinking, where do I rocket or where do I wear Meteor Strike? Decides to just, just fall back a little bit, try and get some high ground, try and look to see if anybody was flanking up behind them. An elephant man switching to a roadhog. This might not be the worst idea. In uh, in this case, as we see a dive pick with a far from uh, the Falcons. Yes, they have a popping primal rage there, trying to deal with Capri Sun, trying to just get rid of that backline, deal with the healers as both Snark and Kagazi or Snark and Zoom chase after Kagazi here. Elephant man again, still on his roadhog, almost building up that ultimate. Not too long, so next fight he'll definitely have that ultimate, but it might be too late for that as we see an email again with some some sneaky little tech here. Just he should be able to just keep rocket punching himself. Yep, just up onto that high ground. He's just gonna wait. He's gonna wait until he sees people pushing. He's gonna look for his target and he's gonna commit. We see the Diva Bomb coming out there from um, from Snark there, finding Capri Sun once again. So they're not gonna have that Moira. They're not going to even let Capri Sun build closer to that coalescence as we see the nano boosted Stevic, and that's gonna be a fairly decisive point going towards the Falcons. Too little too late and no one baiting Schnark's matrix out of him. Although that uh, wasn't too much of a problem for Kagazi there as he just kill him, killed himself on uh, I don't know what. But he managed to. And uh, let's see if we see a pirate ship with a Torbjorn or with a Bastion from the Titans. But it looks like we'll see a pirate ship with both of them from the Titans. Wow. Okay, those those guys are crazy. I don't know how they figure out those picks, but they do. And while not winning the games, at least it's fun to see. It's fun yeah. to look at. And it's fun to cast. Oh, we'll see a classic double sniper combination from the Falcons. Anti male plus zoom picking the two sniper options here. Pretty memes on an Anna. And uh, Reinhardt plus Zarya. Uh, so that's uh, nothing new. We've seen that. We played that. Casted that. And uh, it likely is going to going to work well a for single, the Falcons, a single, a single death can change but that Torbjorn plus Bastion three, pirate ship, this is gonna the be something. Does a Watch out, stop the payload. 
We're going to see anti melt like you were saying, we've had the comps anti melt on that Widowmaker once again, looking for the picks. And with this pirate ship, we're running Torbjorn, Orisa, and Bastion with the double shields. Like, I mean, I don't think there's, there's something better than this when it comes to the ultimate commitment to pirate ship. But they're going to quickly get surrounded there. Kagazi falling almost immediately to a charge along with Glacier. And email finding that way behind and with that, was that just a team kill? Yeah, yep. that was... That's a team so, kill. Yeah, I mean... I don't I don't know if you have anything to say there, VK, but what that looked like was three memes just got... The biggest anti heal on pretty much everyone. They all turned their backs to anti mail. Anti mail managed to put a bunch of pressure. They turned around once again, and then Stebix came along with the hammer and killed all of them. Kagasi loses the sniper duel to anti mail. Antimail is uh, very close on the infra side. Okay, Tree looks like he wants to do a little bit of sneak peek on Torbjorn here. Yeah, Antimail committing Work so out. much there after the Kagazi. Oh, after Kagazi there, as we see Stebek once again in that back in the background, manages to find a charge. Mr. Mage tries to follow it up, and he does manage to find Schnark there, but Schnark's gonna be able to stay alive for a little bit longer as Free Moves hits a anti on Capri Sun. And anti Mail once again is still just applying a pressure along with Glacier, then they're just Oh, anti Mail does fall to Kagazi there. I thought that was the other way around. I was about to go, wow, what a shot. But Kagazi now pushing forward and then immediately being sniped by Glacier. They're not being able to get more than three feet out of the spawn point at this point. Who needs a scope when you're an Omnic? Three ultimates ready. Nano boost is uh, very close to be complete. And it does not look good for the Titans who have zero ultimates to work with. Yeah, we had the hammer down coming out there. I'm not sure who that found. I believe Stevic died immediately as the hammer down came out. So unfortunately, they are going to be down at ult, but they should have communicated by now that they are all coming down into the low ground. You managed to find three. We do hear the dragons coming out. They are going to be able to find Capri Sun, so that Brigade is going to have fallen. They're not going to have, well, they're not going to have a lot of healing coming out. We should say now, especially now with Mr. Mid falling as well. It's going to come down to Glacier and Anti uh, and Anti Mail against Sir Captain and Kagazi. Kagazi falling. This this Zenyatta Widow on both teams is uh, is definitely something unique to watch. Mm, elephant man just trying to duel Stevek there. Backs off in the end, but uh, stacks a nice chunk of that uh, Graviton Surge. Might be helpful in the future fights. We've got uh, 1 minute and 10 seconds ready. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mage ulting. Mr. Mage ulting just straight into Stevic's shield here. We see the transcendence coming up from Sir Captain here. Along with that Graviton surge from Snark, hoping just to wait it out in time. The Earth Shadow does come out, not managing to find anybody thanks to Mr. Mage's shield there, keeping his team protected. But with 50 seconds left on the clock, they're going to have to put some pressure onto the Falcons more than they're doing right now because at the moment they're managing to find two picks but then losing four. Tree peeking Tracer. And judging by 85% and pulse bomb, he did that some time ago. Finds anti mail. Should find Glacier next. Or should he? 30 seconds left on the clock. They've got to get it a little bit further to try and get some more time onto him. But if they can't get that, then this is going to be game set match for the Falcons. Mr. Mage is going to try and look for a flank. He does manage to hit Snark, but being immediately countered. So the dragons come out, they're going to be able to find Elephant Man and Mr. Mage. That's going to be both tanks for the Titans falling down. Tree's going to be able to try and do something here, but with the Transcendence coming out, he's not going to have any damage to do it. And that's going to be the map going towards the Falcons. Not oh. yet. Not yet. Yeah. he falls. Yeah. Now it's going to be there you go. going towards the Falcons. And <laughs> Mr. Mage <laughs> on the hammer here. They're trying to contest it for that last moment. I spoke a little bit too early as they are able to hold this point long enough for maybe Elephant Man to get back as well. Elephant Man, yep, managing to get back just in time along with Tree and Sir Captain. This truly is a fight trying just to glimpse on, trying for is whatever they can get. But with that Graviton coming out, I am going to probably say that that is probably GG now. Elephant Man and Tree uh, just being alive here. Stevic is trying to do something. Uh, Kagazi now getting some high ground onto that corner. Anti Mail does spot him there, so he's going to chase after that. We see the Infrasite coming out, and with Tree and Kagazi just dancing around this point, trying for as long as they can. Stevic finally manages to find them, and that's going to be game. Finally. They've, uh, they've put, put a, quite a fight on the end. But uh, still, that's. Um, 
That's a very decisive victory from the Falcons. There's not yeah. much to say here. I mean, this player game from Anti Mail, I believe this is where he meteor strikes and finds. Okay, this is where he. Yeah, this is where he finds the supercharger. Turns around. Yeah. Okay. So he manages to find three picks pretty much in that one clip there, along with the supercharger. Truly showing how much Doomfist can do by himself, but even more when coordinated with a team. Thanks for the love. And uh, yeah, that makes it 4 0 to the Falcons. So, of course, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to week six of the season with the Ludlow Falcons taking the victory. You can follow us at official EGF on Twitter and Twitch for updates and announcements. This season, of course, wouldn't be possible without the support from our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and Mob Crush. I've been Kevin Navic Dignan. You can find me on Twitter at NavicCast. That's N-A-V-A-C-C-A-S-T-S. -S. That was the VK as your usual color caster. You can find me at uh, Twitter handle the VK, but E is a three thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in in just three hours at 7 30 eastern time for alaska region matches